Hey everyone, and welcome back to Reading Crossbow. My name is Lena, and this is my buddy Ron. Hey Lena, and uh, we just got done with Dragon Month, and let's uh, see what we got going this month for our new books. I don't know that we have a theme yet, but we we didn't try for Dragon Month last month; it just kind of happened. So as yeah. we talk about these, maybe a theme will emerge. <laughs> but those of you who are new here, I'm Lena. This is Rob, and we have our own like sort of book club where we read two books a month. That's it. It's super easy to hop in with us if you haven't yet. I pick a book. Rob picks a book and then halfway through each other's recommendations, we each give a quick halfway review without the other person so that we get like unfiltered thoughts without having, you know, you or Rob or me listen to what's going on. And then we wrap up together on that book. So, but this episode is where we talk about this month's picks. So I'm excited because I've never heard of your book. So tell me about yours. All right. So the book I chose this month is called Gunmetal Gods by Zamal Akhtar. Um, I think I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, and Gunmetal Gods, the reason why I've, I picked this is a couple things. So one of the things I was looking for in this show was to kind of give Lena an, the opportunity to experience the, the kinds of books I enjoy. And one of the types of books I like to enjoy are Cosmic Horror or Lovecraftian Horror. I've never heard of Cosmic Horror. Yeah, it's H.P. Lovecraft. That's basically where it all comes from. Okay. Um, it is the nature of Lovecraftian horror or cosmic horror is um, there's it's the fear of the unknown. And it's not just the unknown. It's that you are nothing but an ant compared to the rest of the universe. It, it, it's a very bleak kind of science fiction. It's very, okay. you know, it's very dark and bleak, um, and there might be moments of heroism, but that's the nature of this kind of, of this genre of story. Now, I don't know about this specific book, but it does describe it as there's Lovecraftian gods in this book. So there's going to be some giant Cthulhu monster thing that, you know, is for all intents and purposes treating the humans you know, like ants. And I'm very curious on what this book is. So, but I got to warn you a little bit because this book is independently published. Oh, <laughs> we've been through this before. <laughs> so independently published books often have elements in them that are not maybe commercially viable for a, a traditional publisher so i suspect that's going to be the case in this book is given its kind of dark nature being a cosmic horror um so you know there there's probably going to need to be some uh reader warnings um on contents of this book i would suspect okay well um, i mean tentacles on the cover rob you brought up tentacles in a, in a past episode. I can't remember which one. And I am just, it was foreboding. Yes. And now we have it. Yes. All right. So let's talk about the actual book or the plot itself. This, as far as you can tell from just the, the book back and that kind of stuff, is this is a world where there's two different major factions. And they're at war. I mean, a holy war. Um the book kind of implies this is like crusades inspired holy war against each other. Um, and I think there's two main characters, one on each side of this war. Um, and in come these beings. There are some djinn, like think like genies, as well as there are some other things, which I think... What you see on the cover might be one of the other things, the gunmetal god of the title of this book. Um, Basically Cthune. Uh. So, so, and somehow they're going to interact with this story. But from what I can tell is the two different soldiers, like one of them's more the, 
the the grizzled veteran that's maybe getting a little tired of this of this unending war and the other one might be you know the up and comer from the other side but somehow their stories are going to cross and become you know a very dark tale okay i i feel like all my years of reading like pretty much every world of warcraft book ever printed has led me to this this moment i i, I don't think you're prepared oh gosh okay <laughs> yeah probably not because the parts that i enjoy the least out of all that rich lore is the old gods and the titans okay like basically like in in the chronicles like the world of warcraft chronicles books that whole i think it's book one or volume one is basically like titans and old gods and i could give a crap <laughs> like i've never liked any of that like fast forward me to like you know sylvanas and you know anduin and that world but i i have a hard time with all the old stuff so maybe i am not prepared yeah, I, I, I think I I suspect this book is gonna be compared to everything else we've read on the show, it's probably closest comparison, if I had to guess, is gonna be Poppy War. So I'm nervous oh, for you. No. But I want you to Are actually you? try to enjoy this. As I said, this book is independently published, but it just recently had a Kickstarter for a special edition of the book. You know, oh. An illuminated, cool. an illuminated, really nice version of that book. That Kickstarter ran from, I think, November to December 2023. So six months ago, this Kickstarter went. And this is, and it raised over $100,000 for an independently published book. And the people buying the book are probably people who already read the book and enjoyed it that much. So, yeah, I do that. I think that definitely shows that there is some strong fans behind this series. Um, now, all three books have been published in this trilogy, um, as well as I think there's actually a short novelette, which you can get for free by signing up for a mailing list or something. Um, but this is just, we're just going to do the first book here. And I'm, I'm excited. I think we have definitely not covered anything like this before. All right. Well, we're getting back to our roots this month then. So maybe that's kind of our not planned for theme since we've kind of been falling down these lines. So my book is a classic. Uh, I'm going to call it a modern classic um, because it's, it's beloved. It's Brandon Sanderson. We haven't done any Sanderson on this podcast and it's, it's Sanderson. So, like, at some point, we had to hit one of his books. Um, so, I think that this is a great place to start. And I'm a little nervous, I have to tell you. I, I'm very, very nervous this month. Because I love, I love this book. And I could take it when you didn't like other books. But I don't, I don't know if I can take it if you don't like this book. I'll be crushed inside. So the it's funny because like when you when you were talking about bringing up some old Sanderson and I have read a couple Sanderson like his Wheel of Time and the um, the Reckoners which is like Ironheart series um, that's a superhero books um, and so I but I've never really d delved into his Cosmere because I was a little more intimidated by it but I actually had someone suggest to me I should be reading the Stormlight Archive mm -hmm. because and they said I. I, I would uh, relate to the main character, and I don't. Interesting. And I and and I think that was uh, kind of like a like a kind of hint, you know, joking about the character and having um, some personality traits. But um, oh dear, like or the insufferable character you always talk about—that's not redeemable at all. I hope that your friend wasn't referring to you like that. <laughs> But anyway, I haven't even said the name of the book. It is Mistborn. It's not the traditional cover you see because I take my covers off when I store them. I know a lot of book purists hate that because the jacket's meant to 
protect like if it's leather bound or cloth bound um but um I'll, I'll put a picture up you guys can see what like my book wall looks like i just like storing them this way i think cover spines are beautiful um so i don't have the jacket on this but i've read this before i've read the whole series um i don't actually love the third book i will say that um but i love 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 the first book and second book so um third books it's fine it's just fine maybe it's because i didn't want it to um end but the stormlight archive is part of the cosmere like universe and i actually haven't read into the stormlight archive yet because um around the time i finished this was when we had first really started talking about doing this we talked about it for we never did we didn't do it for a while so yeah. i never got into it because we did all of this but this book is great uh because i feel like this is in my opinion so far the best magic system that i've read okay. and i know that that's saying a lot and that's even like the last book that we just talked about was actually dragonfall and that had a clever magic system in it too um and i gave that on its highest level of four so this is better than that we might <laughs> have to redo our rating system for this book's magic system but um going to tell you a quick overview of the story. Please, so we please. must have a theme. Yeah, we must have a theme with books that, you know, a thousand years run its course because we just did that with the Priory of the Orange Tree. But a thousand years have gone by of this, like, event that happened. Um, and the world is in ash. It's basically like uh, this world and its downfall. It's dystopian. Um, everyone that's living in it is basically living as peasants. Um, and there's not a, the world is very bleak, exactly your kind of world, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, it is, it is ruled by the Lord ruler and he has different Lords that serve him in the valleys and they all have, you know, slaves or ska. Um, and there's just little to live for and hope for in this bleak world. And then we get our main character, Vin. Um, and she meets this kind of band of, um, oh, I don't want to say thieves. They're just a band of misfits. Uh, magic exists in this world. Uh, but she's, she's part of the ska. She's part of this group of people that are, you know, living in poverty, this very bleak world. She happens to meet this group of characters and basically we're going to get a heist. We're going to get a heist story, like what you love. And, and, and they need to bring down the Lord Ruler. It's a three book series. So it's going to take a while to do all that. Um, but the group of characters that she, she fits in with, uh, is amazing and the magic and the uh, people who use magic in this world are called allomancers and when they use uh, when the allomancers use their magic it's a form of allomancy and it's elemental magic we've talked a lot about elemental magic and i particularly like how the elemental magic is used in this book so yeah that, that's the mistborn series um and there's there's allomancers and that's like a more common form of magic a lot of people can use this allomancy um, and it's like lower forms. And then there's an elite group of people called the Mistborn. And these are like elite magic users. So hence the name of the, the book. Have you heard much about the book? Honestly, no. I know of it. And I know of the greater Cosmere as a concept. Um, but like I said, I've always been kind of... I didn't really know where to pick up um, in, in, in some of these series. Um you know, I felt the same way about like the Shannara books, for example, where it's like, yeah, there's not maybe even picking up the very first one isn't the right spot to start. Like maybe starting somewhere else is the better place to start. And I kind of felt that way about the Cosmere in general was I didn't really have a good starting place. Um, and now I have one by, you know, and I guess I'll just have to start here. Yeah, I, I was told to start here. So back when I used to stream and be a Twitch streamer, I had been referred this book for years. People kept telling me to read this. And I, I hear this story a lot with my fellow readers. Like I have a friend who's like, she's she's been a big reader for a She reads like 10, 12 books a month. She reads so much. And she's never read this. And all her friends are like, read it, read it, read it. And it's that intimidating. There's so many Sanderson books. Where do you start? And that's kind of how it felt for me. And I finally did it. And it, it's just really great. And also, people who watch the show that know I love YA, 
I love romance. I love all of that in a book. It doesn't get more slow burn than Brandon Sanderson because he does not write spicy at all. Like <laughs> at all. <laughs> These books are such a tease constantly, but it's in here and it's in here in a way that's very sweet. So like kids can read this really teens, young teens, even like it is harmless. So <laughs> from me, the YA reader saying this is one of my favorite series of all time. I'm excited for you to read it. So yeah, getting back to our roots this month. Yeah, I'm very interested in this. And, and in the case of mine, I have not read this book. I this is a just a pick for me, but um, I'm I'm excited to see what why people like this so much, especially being in an independently published book. Um, that's yeah. that's uh, that's always, but you know, it always makes me a little nervous. Like, oh, well, why didn't the publishers like this? And if it's this successful, it's probably on content, not on the writing style. That would be my guess. That this might be, you know, content that's a little more challenging for some people to read. So might be we might need to add some trigger warnings to the beginning of the next episode, or at least yeah, the, we haven't done that in a while. Yeah, well, we haven't had need to really. Yeah, not not too bad. Maybe some of these, maybe I don't know. We haven't really talked about violence too much, but most of our books get into some form of violence. But um, yeah, no, I think um. I'll also, we haven't really talked much about whether or not we're going to reread books. And when I started out the series with you, I didn't think I would, I wasn't sure I'd pick like a book that I read before. You know, I generally don't like to reread books. I love to rewatch movies, but I don't generally like to reread books. But I think it was fair now that I've read so much more fantasy, read so many more magic systems that I give this another look. And I'm actually curious if I'll rate the magic system so high in my mind now. I have a feeling that I will, but I don't know. So it's almost like nerve wracking for me to have you read it because I love it so much, yeah. but also nerve wracking on what if I change my mind? Yeah, it, that your rose colored glasses might be revealed. Yeah, well, I, when I first read the first book anyway, I referred it to everyone. So many people read this book because I read this book, like lots of people, my, even my daughter's friends read this book. But um, by the time I got to the third one, I wasn't, I was less inclined to, you know, and I still have that, that feeling still, still feels fresh. So I don't think I oversold it to myself, but who knows? Maybe I did. But all I know is we want you guys to subscribe to the channel. We need that. If you've made it this far, if you're going to read these books with us, if you're going to follow along, or if you're not, you just like some of our older episodes and you're checking in on books that you've read, please follow us. Uh, yeah. Let's help us get that subscriber count a bit higher and also tune in next week because Rob is going to give his halfway thoughts on this part. Yeah, that should be should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to reading this book. And uh, I'm um, curious about your book. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you all. Bye.